isolated system. For an isolated system, BQ would be equal to 0. So what you get is essentially for an isolated, isolated system, ds is greater than or equal to 0. In words, it means the entropy of the universe always increases. Isolated in universe is an isolated system. Huh? Yes. And since universe is also an isolated system, so the entropy of the universe, rather the more stringent statement would be the entropy of the universe cannot decrease. Yes, please. Which part, where do I start? Is this fine? Is this fine? Is this fine? Yeah. Okay. Huh? Why not? Yeah. Sorry? One How does it? No, it doesn't. It only says only for isolated systems. Isolated systems are the one where you do not have any heat exchange. Right? DQ is zero. Rest of it is fine. Even if DQ is negative, DS is going to be no, less negative. Okay, if DQ is positive, DS is going to be more positive. Sir, but how does it prove the Kelvin statement? It's just another. That's what. I said that there is one Kelvin statement, <coughs> which is the second law. Right? And it does not prove that, but I am trying to relate the two. I came all the way from the Kelvin statement to the fact that your entropy is a state function. Right? And from there I am showing you this. So the equivalence of the two statements is all I can say. Okay. So with those kind of uh, tools in our hands. Let's try and see if we can solve some things, if we can know some things about entropy. Huh? Let's look at some simple ones. So for example, isothermal expansion of ideal gas. What would be delta S? I didn't tell you one thing, so let me just tell, tell you now. So, the spontaneous direction is going from A to B. So, that's spontaneous. That's irreversible. But whenever I wish to calculate entropy, whenever I wish to evaluate how much the entropy is, how much the entropy changes, I always need to work back mostly or work for a reversible path. If I have the reversible path, I can calculate delta S. For the irreversible, if you try to calculate delta S, you will always run into errors. So always you have to construct a reversible path in order to calculate delta S. And so let us see this for an isothermal expansion of an ideal gas. So what is the change in the entropy of the system? That is simply Q by T. Yes. And it is an ideal gas, it is isothermal, so delta U is 0, so Q is nothing but minus W, W is minus PdV, so DW is minus PdV, sorry, 
which is n r t log v2 by v1 so and this is q by t yes so n r log v final by v initial now that's delta s system what would be that for the surrounding huh exactly negative of this it's an isothermal reversible process it's exactly which gives you that the total change in the entropy is zero why do you expect that it's a reversible thing and for a reversible process the change in entropy is zero yes it satisfies the clausius inequality it says ds greater than or equal to zero so this is a case where your total delta s is equal to 0 what about if i have uh, an isothermal expansion against vacuum that's an irreversible process Anna? what would be the delta s of the system huh Right. So, entropy is a state function. No matter how you, how you reach that final volume, as long as it's the same, delta S is for the system is going to be n r log v f by v i. It's nothing more. As long as the v f and v i are same, yeah. It's a state function. Just doesn't matter how you reached it. But what about the delta S of surroundings? Okay, so how much would it be? Why? Because your delta U is equal to 0, work done is 0, so Q has to be 0, right? Right. So free expansion. delta s system is still the same n r log v f by v i ok let us take another <coughs> another example <coughs> and you know most of these examples are like the ones that I am going to take are more of common sense but let us try and understand it entropically so as to say. So I have two metal blocks and I